It may very well be the most popular leather coral of all time. It's mythical, it's magical, it's the weeping willow leather coral, and today we've got a big update. Let's go. Happy New Year. If you are new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. If you want to win a frag of the Weeping Willow Leather Coral, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. More on that giveaway at the end of today's video. Before we start, leave a comment below. What is one of your favorite corals that isn't necessarily super popular or trendy? Jumping right in, I feel like my first intro to this coral, and I think a lot of people's first intro to this coral was the late Jake Adams. He did a whole video on this one coral and I was obsessed after that. Years ago, one of the local fish stores here in St. Louis, the Art of Aquaria, had posted up a video of what appeared to be something very similar to what Jake Adams had. It was gorgeous, long spaghetti-like polyp stalks just swaying and moving with the flow of the aquarium. I immediately called the shop and said, hey, hold that for me, I'll be in tonight. I went and picked it up and the rest is history. I remember contacting Jake about this coral and in true Jake Adams form, he was like, well, do you know that you actually have a true weeping willow sarcophyton? And I said, I don't know. What are some of the characteristics? And he said, I'm gonna let you figure that out for yourself. So I did an entire video comparing what I had to the characteristics of what he had. And if you've seen that video I did a couple years ago, then you know that it had all of the characteristics except for one. When the flow is turned off, the polyp stalks don't fold over the crown of the toadstool, creating that weeping willow tree look. So since doing that video, and then I did another video where I fragged the mother colony of weeping willow, I have had nonstop requests for this coral. I think some people think that I am a business, but I'm just a hobbyist who sometimes does frag swaps. And unfortunately, it's hard to tell people that I have frags of this available because it is really a slow grower. I've been letting a few mother colonies grow out a little bit so that I can eventually have some frags available. Than from Tato Gardens actually did a whole video where he was mentioning why leather corals are harder to farm because of factors like slow growth, they take up a lot of space, and while they're easy to propagate, it's kind of a tedious process to get the frags to grow onto a rock or a frag plug. And we're talking on a farm level here. You gotta remember, a farm or a local fish store, that's a totally different ball game than just the hobbyist level. So like I said, I ended up fragging my mother colony a couple years ago, and some of those frags ended up in some really good friends' hands, or tanks. I asked the inappropriate reefer, or Moki, to send me an update on his. Hey, what's up, Remy? It is my pleasure to show you how the whipping willow frag that you gave me a few years back looks today. Check this out. So this is one of two frags that uh, my recent SA Telegram transported from St. Louis to Maryland. I got one and he got one. Unfortunately, his fell into an elegance. I hope it's not this one. And uh, he's now looking for uh, a frag that I'm hoping to be able to pull maybe in a, in a few months for him. But uh, I am ashamed to report that for the first year, year and a half, this coral did absolutely nothing in my mangrove tank. It was it was a quarter size frag. It, it's well formed, no injury at all, completely healed up. But it just sat there and did nothing. Uh, it's not until uh, my friend Daniel from New York gave the suggestion of maybe moving it to a higher light, higher flow area. And then I was like, all right, well, let's, let's give it a try. That brought this coral to life. And within the span of about half a year, it almost triple in size in terms of the uh, oral disc or the uh, top portion and the stock was maybe like four times now so it's growing really really well in this area and uh, so first of all like thank you for the frag and then also thank you to Daniel and another thank you to send out is actually Mr. Jake Adam for introducing uh, the whipping willow frag he is the one that named this coral and i think like until then nobody really knows about this really really cool looking soft coral and uh even if people do they're just like oh it's the toadstool leather and that's pretty much it so i think like uh he has the magic touch in terms of like identifying unique corals and naming these um 
giving them the appropriate name. And once people hear Weeping Willow, it just clicks so well. Because sometimes like you get random names of ran uh, with like random chord that has no correlation, and that doesn't really spark any interest. But when people hear about the Weeping Willow, they see the properties where it kind of connects with the name. It just all, it just all makes sense. It just creates this frenzy that everybody just want a piece of the Weeping Willow. And here's where I really want to thank you, Remy, as well, for allowing me to uh, own a piece of this Bahama Llamas Whipping Willow. And I cannot wait to see how it grows out in another half a year or so. Ah, man, thank you. And I really want to see how the other uh, lucky owners of your Whipping Willows have theirs grown out. Because once again, I have a lag of about a year or so that really did nothing because I didn't provide with the right environment. I'm really excited to see how other people have been growing theirs out and how these coral look in a more mature form. So once again, thank you. And I uh, can't wait to see the other people's updates. I want to thank Milky for sending me that video. Make sure to subscribe to the Inappropriate Reefer on YouTube. Another good friend of mine, Blaine from King Tide Corals also has one in his tank. So let's head on over to California. What's going on reefers? My name is Blaine. I also go by King Tide Corals over on YouTube. Uh, I want to say thank you to Remy for sending me a piece of this willow way back when. Uh, I ended up losing all my livestock. Remy was gracious enough to send me a little care package with some other people. And one of the pieces was a piece of the Weeping Willow Frag. I got it at a really small size and since then it's grown a ton. Um, it looks really good in my tank here. This is my 25 gallon lagoon, soft coral paradise tank I call it. Um, there's a lot of different species of soft corals in here, but one of my crown jewels is definitely Remy's Weeping Willow that he sent me. And it's grown a ton. Um, I would consider this one of the hosts for the clownfish pair that I have in here. Uh, they look really nice inside this toadstool, just like Remy's in his frag tank. You know, the clownfish look great in this toadstool. Um, and they look really nice in it here too. But it's definitely grown out a bunch um, since I recently got it. You know, I've had it for, I forget the course of time, about eight months or so. But overall, it's grown a ton. It looks really good. And I'm extremely excited for what's the future of this thing. I don't think this thing will ever see scissors or anything like that. If it self frags, great, but I'll never cut this thing. I definitely want it to grow out and get really big and see what kind of crazy polyp length we can get out of it. So big shout out to Remy once again for sending me this thing. And yeah, overall, I would say this is one of my favorite soft corals um, that I've ever actually been able to have in my tank. Huge thanks to Blaine for sending me that video. Again, you can subscribe to King Tide Corals on YouTube. So that's just a couple of examples of the slower growth of the Weeping Willow. And it might vary from tank to tank. Like you might have great parameters and your toadstools just grow like crazy. That might be your tank. But for whatever reason, I think the average for this is kind of medium to slower growth on this Weeping Willow toadstool. There are a handful of hobbyists here in the St. Louis area that caught me at a frag swap and I did have some frags and were able to snag one up. And now I get to tell you something awesome. Last summer, someone from the Shed Aquarium reached out to me. Shed Aquarium is in Chicago and they said, hey, would you want to donate one of your Weeping Willow frags or colonies? It was like getting a call from like a casting director in Hollywood if you're an actor. I was so excited to say yes, because eventually I would get to see one of my corals in the Shed Aquarium in Chicago. This is an aquarium that I grew up going to as a child. This aquarium is partly responsible for my love of the ocean and all of the creatures within it. So the frags made the long journey from St. Louis all the way to Chicago. And I gotta say thanks to Tim for being the transport. He passed it off to Jason and they immediately went to their coral room for observation, quarantine, that whole thing. So while the mother colony was under observation, it actually popped another head. A little frag came off of the side. They ended up propagating that and that is in a display now at the Shed Aquarium. I still haven't had a chance to go up and see this frag on display, but dang. It's really cool to know that Shed Aquarium also has bubble algae. So see, you're not alone. You're not alone. I wanna say thanks to Jason Roberts for helping me out along the way. For those that don't know, if you ever get the opportunity to donate any kind of coral to an aquarium, there's a whole donation process. You gotta fill out paperwork, all the things. He's also the one that has provided all the video from Shed Aquarium. So thank you so much, Jason. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping someday this year, I'll be able to go up to Chicago and check it out. If you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you know that I love corals and fish 
with some sort of story to them. Obviously, Uno and Dos raised from eggs, and now they're in their own aquarium over here, which is awesome. Uh, the scoli that I fragged from a fragged scoli from Chummingham's Reef. And of course, this weeping willow, which is magical. It really is. And I know that it's not the same strain as the Jake Adams weeping willow, but it's one of those corals that's always going to remind me of him. I wanted to mention one more really cool toadstool that's finally grown out, and this thing is fire. It's some strain of long polyp toadstool, but this thing is so cool. I got it from a guy named Michael. Uh, obviously, we're friends on Instagram. He is a reefer, and he had this beautiful display of long polyp toadstools, and this was one of them. It doesn't have a name or anything like that. It's just a sarcophyton that is beautiful. I would compare it to the Weeping Willow toadstool, but green, like just a beautiful fluorescent green. And unfortunately, it's decided to mount itself to the glass, which should be easy to get off at some point with a razor blade, but wow, this piece is really awesome. And once you start shifting your perspective to look in your local fish store's tanks for different long polyp toadstools, you'll start to see a wide array of different kinds. And once this channel passes 20,000 subscribers, you will unlock a weeping willow toadstool giveaway. I'm so excited for this. But if you haven't, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. Huge thanks to Fritz Aquatics. Might have something in the oven cooking up with them for this year. I'm very excited about that. Also, I want to say shout out to my good friend at Ocean State Aquatics, Mr. Scott Crow, Toasty. who just did a video with Sean Snails of Fritz. They had a little scape off. It was kind of fun. They did it in Rhode Island at OSA. The video is linked below. Remember to check out all things OSA on their YouTube, on their Facebook, and on their Instagram. It's Ocean State Aquatics. A little update on Uno and Dose. They're killing it. They're doing great. They're doing fantastic in this new tank. They love it. It's awesome. It's brilliant. It's great to see them swimming around the tank together. Maybe you've seen another extra thing floating around in the background. I'm not going to zoom in on it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to ruin the next video. But... They might have a new luxury apartment within their tank. And we'll get to that in the next one. So, hope you have a fantastic day, night, evening, whatever. And I will uh, see you in the next one, okay? That's all. Goodbye.